Dr. Briggs, uh, thank you first of all for sitting down with us. Yeah. As we get ready to no uh, talk about back to school and get the school year started. Let me just start by saying, how was your summer? I mean, did you, did you get to go anywhere? Any vacations or anything like that? Uh, well, you know, I do. We do a family vacation every every year where we go up to Northern Bay, which yeah. is up in Adams County and uh, everything. So I was up there for a little bit, but at, at the time of being on vacation, I also had foot surgery. Oh. So I really got to put my foot up a little bit and folks kind of just kind of served me a little bit. So yeah. it was it was fun for me uh, to just be with the family and just have some time together. So we did get away a little bit. Yeah, glad you got some relaxation in. All right, let's talk about uh, school and education. Why did you decide to go into the field of education? Let's start with that. Oh man, why did I go into the field of education? My wife, like 100%. Um, she was working for Milwaukee Academy of Science, which is a school, a charter school down in the Milwaukee area, teaching second grade. and. She uh, asked me to volunteer in her class, and at the time, I, I don't want anything to do with kids. I, I hated kids because of experiences that I had when I was younger. Um, and she asked me to volunteer, and I said, oh, no, I'm good. She asked me again, I volunteered in her class that first time. I went in there the second time, went in there the third time, and that third time I asked myself that critical question, why am I working with kids? I had majored in health science, corporate community fitness, um, and then that kind of started that, that path for me to transition from that field into education. So she's the, the reason that I'm kind of where I'm at, I think. I like that. So tell us a little bit about why is education so important uh, to you right now and, and, and in this climate that we're living in uh, yeah. in the country? Yeah, I, I think education is so important because when we think about what we want to see with kids, what we want to see for their futures, uh, the sky's the limit. Right. Um, if we don't have um, the, the, the students today take us to that next level uh, in society um, to be who we hope for them to be, um, we're going to find ourselves in a really tough spot because I know I'm not going to be around much longer. I know there's others that's in the educational field that won't be around much longer. But thinking about just society in itself, um, just producing some of the things that we want to see produce by way of what they learn in school is going to be really critical uh, in the future. You touched on hope a little bit. Uh, as we enter into the 2024-2025 uh, school year, hard mm -hmm. to believe, uh, what are some of, of your kind of host, hopes and aspirations for these young people here in Baraboo? Yeah, my, um, some of my biggest hopes for um, people here in Baraboo is to really think about um, what it is that they want to do and be. Right, we're gonna give them every opportunity to do it by way of the instruction that we provide, by way of the staff that we put in front of them, um, the opportunities they get in the classroom. So my hope is that as kids take on these, um, the, the classwork, uh, they take on the opportunities with some of the courses that we offer, whether it's uh, building trades, whether it's pro start, um, you know, that they take these opportunities and, and learn to be their best selves as they kinda move through life. To be their best self, um, they need good teachers. They Absolutely. need good educators. Across the country, we're seeing staffing vacancies. Yeah. Um, as we're getting just a few weeks out of, uh, of this new school year, where do we sit here in this district when we talk about staffing vac vacancies and teacher shortages? Yeah, yeah. We, we currently have a, a number of vacancies. I would say we range right now from probably six to eight uh, vacancies. I could be off by one or two, but um, I would say right now we're doing a lot of things to, to, to reach out and have people putting their eyes on our vacancies. You know, we're putting stuff on social media. We're posting stuff on some of the different um, hiring sites. Uh, we're putting stuff out in our district to kind of see maybe there's people internally that's looking for different opportunities than what they currently have. So we're, we're doing a number of things to kind of build um, and close those gaps of, of, of vacancies that we have. Uh, and also, I mentioned this earlier, vacancies with transportation, too. We want to make sure our, our young people are getting to school yeah. safely and in a timely manner. So uh, what, what are we doing to kind of fill that gap? And I think that's in, in a similar manner. Um, you know, we don't have our own uh, busing, you know, uh, company here, but we, we utilize Lamers. And I know Lamers has done a, a great job of um, putting their vacancies out there. We have buses in our school parking lots with, with signs on them to let people know that the bus company is hiring and things like that. So we're really um, leaning into uh, supporting what's, what's needed for having all positions filled. We already mentioned goals, but are there specific priorities um, that we want to focus on 
um, as, as we go into this new year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's, there's three in particular. You know, there's um, staff engagement, student attendance, and family connectedness. Um, and those, those are really uh, three big ones. I mean, every year we, we ask families and, and uh, students by, and staff by way of uh, surveys, you know, what can be done better? How, how can we improve this or improve that? Um, what don't you like? What would you like to see done different? You know, and we, we get that feedback. And the one thing that I want to just say is that feedback from staff, students, and families is really critical to how we may go about doing things and seeing things be different. So um, for me this year, a big part of what I'm starting is um, a advisory committee for student staff and parents to the superintendent. So there are three separate groups and um, that's hitting on all those things to kind of make sure we can hear their voice, bring their voices to the table, um, support them you know, as they see their need is there for them to be supported. Touched on this a little bit too, um, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, there was an incident in this summer at graduation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How did that uh, impact you, that experience? Um, and then how do you move, move on from that? Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a great question. Uh, how did it impact me? Uh, number one, you know, uh, I, th I think you don't expect something like that um, to kind of take place or to happen. Um, but in that moment, you know, I had to really think about a number of different things. I had to think about my family, I had to think about myself, I think about the 3,000, 4,000 people that was in the gymnasium, and are we all safe, right? That, that was like the initial thought for me. Um, but after the situation, it really allowed me to really think about my safety, staff safety, uh, when we have events, how we're going to um, proceed kind of moving forward to make sure that none of our events, we have things like that take place. Um, and I think the, the Baraboo Police Department has been really supportive and helpful. Um, I think our leadership team, the school board, have all been really supportive uh, of, of myself along with others that was in the space. So it's, it's really making sure that we're, we're in a better uh, situation next time uh, if something like that was to happen. And, and how we move forward from this is to know that no matter what, and many people have heard me talk about this, building a beloved community. Dr. King talks about you know, um, social change right and thinking about those six steps to social change you know information gathering um, um, education commitment you know discussions having those discussions and conversations with people so that they understand you know if there's a disagreement if there's something that you are not happy about let's have a conversation don't put your hands on me you know um, and then also what are what are the direct actions we need to take and if there's something that is broken how do we reconcile that so those six steps as we continue to build in this community are, are really critical to us having the success that we want to have and, and need like, to have. And I like what you said there, you know, if, if you don't agree with me, come, come, come talk to me. So if people, you know, are in the community, they don't necessarily agree with some of your, your policies, you know, what do you say to, to them? Yeah. yeah, I mean, communication. Like if there's something that you don't like or you don't agree with, um, in many cases, there's policies, there's procedures that are in place. Um, to support you. There's a there's a avenue for you to express, you know, your your concern. Um, I, I personally think I'm a pretty reasonable individual. You you set up a time that I'm easy to get a hold of also. Set up a time to meet with me or meeting with the appropriate people to flush out whatever those challenges may have been or be um, so that we can come to an understanding as to why things may have happened the way that they happened. Or this is just the way that it is because this is policy or this is law, this is the statute. Um, so we want people to know that there's a way to work through these things. And I, I often say um, any and everything is figure outable, right? And that may be a word that some people may look at and frown upon, but any and everything is figure outable. And most people know what I mean when I say that. The last thing I want to say about this incident is, you know, we mentioned, you said people all over the world saw this. Mm -hmm. You know, you got calls from people all over the world. I just think about our students, mm -hmm. our children saw that. So what's the message that we're sending to our, to our young people? Yeah, I think the message that we want to send to our young people is once again, anything that we encounter, we can figure it out. We can work through it. I know there's a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration, uh, in some cases hate um, that is really out there on the, on the table, on the floor. But I guarantee you, if we were to communicate, 
and we were to process through those things and work through those things, we can make our world and our society a lot better than what it has been. Let's get to uh, some, some good things here. Um, best advice for the first day of school. You know, it's quickly approaching. Um, you have, you know, children of your own. How do you prepare them for the first day of school? Yeah, I, I would say the, the first thing about the first day of school is um, approach it with an open mind and enthusiasm. There's going to be some anxiety for some students. There's going to be anxiety for parents, uh, for that matter. But keep an open mind. Um, if, if kids are, are waking up on the wrong side of the bed, let's make sure they're getting some uh, additional love. Make sure as parents we're, we're giving them love, we're encouraging them, you know, big smiles, making sure they're eating, getting good rest. Um, but at the same time, if, if, there, if a kid is, once again, waking up on the wrong side of the bed, make sure that as a parent, you're reaching out to the staff to just kind of let them know, hey, Johnny may need a little bit more love today, you know, so our teachers can be prepared to support them through any of those challenging times. But those first few days is really about establishing uh, relationships, getting to know each other, um, and how the school year may, may play out. Man, lunch. <laughs> you know, but no, I would say the first thing I was, I mean, really, who was my teacher? Like getting to meet my teacher. And, and um, I remember the smell of school, man. So like the smell of pencils. So like my, my little box that I had with all my pencils in it, I couldn't wait to get to school to put them in my desk. Right. So I was really excited about being there um, and, until I hit about third grade. <laughs> then reality set <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah. Um, OK, the last few questions here. Um, Tell us something positive about the Bear Boost School District. What do you want people out there in TV land to, to know about what's happening here? I want people to know that like there's a lot of really good things happening here. We have amazing staff. Uh, we have amazing, you know, uh, our middle school is, is relatively new. Um, our high school has had some renovations. We're really looking to make some renovations to our, our uh, elementary schools by way of the referendum that's uh, hopefully going to be on the ballot um, this, this fall. Um, but ultimately, we have amazing staff. I know we have a place for our kids to come to feel loved and cared for. Um, and I, I live in this love triangle. Uh, that's being accepting, uh, understanding, and appreciating. And that's what I want to make sure that every one of our kids feel and every one of our staff feel as they come back to the school um, district this year. But I want the community to know that that's how we're operating. I want the world to know that's how we're operating in the, in the vein of love. I didn't mention this before, but um, you know, you and I talked a little bit about diversity. Um, maybe we can touch on the importance of of diversity in the world that we live in, and not just talking about skin color, but talking yeah. about like gender disabilities. Like, um, why is diversity so important? Yeah, yeah, diversity is so important because I think our world isn't made up of one color, one gender. It's not made up of one, you know, anything, right? So we have you know, so many things that our kids and our staff will encounter over time. And, and Baraboo isn't the only place that our kids are going to live. It isn't the only place that our teachers are going to work. So the importance of being um, exposed uh, or to experience many different aspects of diversity is critical to the development of what our kids will turn out to be, what our staff will utilize in their classrooms as they educate our students. So uh, diversity is critical to the, I personally think, the success of, of what our students will encounter in their lives, not just a moment in time in education. All right, going on year four, um, you've seen a lot in the past four <laughs> years. Um, how have you evolved? How have you changed? And what's your hope for the future? Yeah, um, I think I've changed um, in, a, in a couple different ways. I think I've become more patient. Um, and I've really, uh, I've really become a person to listen. Um, and those two things together kind of, I think, will bring results uh, in terms of supporting, you know, people. And you heard me talk about the advisory committees. You know, you got students, you got staff, and you got parents. You know, and having that listening ear and having that patience uh, to know that, like, urgency won't fix things. Um, urgency sometimes causes you to make decisions and that could be harmful. So having that patience has been really a, a key point in who I've truly become as a person. Um, and also listening. 
I think that is really critical to like not listening because I want to respond, but listening because I want to understand what's kind of happening, what what I can possibly do to support you or a group or whomever, and given the situations. Um, and the second part of that was, um, what did what future? Future. future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my future hopes uh, here is to be that school district that you know everybody wants to attend. Everybody wants to see the, the change in how we do things in terms of some of the challenges that we've faced, um, but also allowing some of the, the wounds that we've had to heal, right, without new wounds being brought to the table.